Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, this Wheatfield Town Board meeting of June 1st, 2020 is being held remotely and by, by electronic video conference via the Zoom video conference service due to the COVID-19 emergency situation. A state of emergency declaration is in effect for the town and the town hall is currently closed to the public. It began March 16th, 2020 and has been extended several times and is now in effect until June 16th, 2020. On March 13th, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202.1 in an effort to address the conflict between the requirements of the Open Meetings Law and the Governor's Emergency Orders limiting public gatherings. Specifically, Executive Order number 202.1 suspends Article 7 of the Public Officers Law, also known as the Open Meetings Law, to the extent necessary to permit any public body to meet and take such actions as authorized by law without allowing the public to be physically present at the meeting. The order also authorizes public bodies to meet remotely by conference call or similar service. If a public body restricts in-person access to its meetings or conducts a meeting remotely by conference call or such similar service, the public body must provide the public the ability to view or listen to such meetings and must record and later transcribe such meetings. This meeting is being conducted pursuant to said orders. Public comment period shall be suspended for this meeting and as, as it is not required by law. There are no scheduled public hearings and technically difficult based on the circumstances. The town will accept questions, comments, and input via email or regular mail and will be answered directly by the appropriate town personnel as soon as possible. Regular town meeting format in person with public comment will return as soon as the emergency conditions resolve. Uh, thank you, Matt. Is Kathy on? I am. Okay, Kathy, I don't see you, but we're going to, oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. All right, Kathy, uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And to the Republic. Which is famous. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Kathy, if we would read the prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we pray thee to grant wisdom to all who are in authority that order and justice may be upheld to the benefit of all citizens and guide us to better serve the people of our community. Restrain those who seek to destroy our government. We ask your divine wisdom to rest upon our leaders to guide them and protect them. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, for the record, all board members are present via Zoom. Approval of the minutes, May 18th, please, if I could have a motion. So moved. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, op any opposition? Minutes are approved. Bill payment of June 1st, 2020, voucher number 2020693 through 2020851, total amount of $167,549.04. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. A motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, any opposition? Bills are paid. Department heads. Uh, is Polly Sigmund on? No, he's not. Okay. Wait a second. I got one person waiting. Maybe it's he's coming in right now. Okay. Hang on. That's Paul. All right, let's go to water floor. Rich. Anything anything tonight, Rich? Uh Richie, I think you're muted. No report, Don. Okay, thank you, Rich. Anybody have anything for Rich? Nothing? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, is Paul on yet? Paul's on, but he has no no microphone and his camera's off. All uh, right, Paul, can you hear me? There he is. Any report tonight, Paul? I think he's still watching. All right. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but uh, okay. Um, recreation, Mike Rinaldi. Mike, do you have anything for us tonight? 
Mike? No report on. I'm sorry? Not tonight. For some reason, everybody's cutting out. John, can you hear me? I can hear somebody speaking. I don't know what it is. I think Mike's uh, network connection is uh, a little slow. Okay. He's there, but he's. Okay. Mike, can you hear us? No report. He said there's no report, Don. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, then we have the Kelly. Do you have anything for us tonight? No report tonight. Thank you. Kelly. No report, John. I'm sorry. Mike Rinaldi said no report again. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Don, uh, Kurt here. I do have a question for Mike and really any of the department heads if they might know. I'm looking for some American flags that. Uh, the enhancement volunteers might be able to use for some decorating we'd like to do for the upcoming 4th of July holiday. So if anybody knows of any flags, I'm looking for the small ones that, that go on the, the, on the stick more than the ones that are, are free, like the large ones that you'd run off a flagpole. But if anybody knows of anybody, I'd appreciate it if you reach out. Uh, this is Dave. You're looking for donations or, or source of them? Uh, a source of uh, as many, I guess, as can you hear me? Well, get them, get them right from uh, uh, the American Legion. All okay. that money goes right back to the veterans. Oh, they, they sell them, you mean? Absolutely. Okay. Oh. And Kurt, Mike, Kurt, well, Kurt, did you say you had... You had where we were standing in the mall last week. Um, well, we got all the flags Mike. for our cemetery and all of the flags for our monuments and everything right from the American Legion. I buy some for myself also. Anybody can purchase them. Good okay. Price. Thanks, Dave. If anyone does have flags that are available that we have not used, uh, contact Kurt and make sure he gets them. If not, Kurt, I can't imagine purchasing some flags from the American Legion or even Cooper if necessary, but I think you have a great idea of putting some flags out. So I think, uh, I think we're good there. Okay, is Paul still on or? Paul was there. Okay. And he left us. That's okay. I mean, we, we met with Paul twice today, so enough of Paul. Um, Tim Zuber, town engineer. Hi, everybody. Um, we didn't really have anything on a formal agenda this evening, but we did have something last minute uh, pop up. Can everybody hear me all right? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, um, I had a call from or some emails from Connie Miner on Friday, and it was with reference to the, to the Veterans Memorial Project. Uh, there is some funding that they're looking to go after, but um, it, it would appear that they need to, to go through the seeker process as part of requirement to, to um, uh, search out those funding uh, sources. So what we did is we just threw together a, a quick short environmental assessment form and filled out the parts two and part three and draft for the town. I emailed those around just earlier today. I don't know if anybody has any questions on those, um, but we also sent a, a draft motion for your potential use this evening if you so choose to go that way. But um, just wanted to, uh, again, it was kind of a last minute thing. I know we wanted to get it in quick, uh, especially if the town doesn't have another meeting until the beginning of July. Wouldn't want to hold them up submitting for grant money. And just, just so everyone knows that, uh, you know, if this grant is approved, whether it be uh, it's 100 percent or whatever the percentage is, uh, we have to go through the seeker process anyway. And if we want to deny the grant, we can do that or go forth, depending on what's offered uh, uh, offered to us. Okay. Anything else, Tim? Uh, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And we have that in our motion package, I believe. Yes, we do. And, you know, Dave Godfrey, while you're on, Dave, what do you have as far as any updates that are related to uh, the county and possibly the, uh, the virus? Anything new? Well, uh, just about uh, an hour ago, I heard that we got the okay to go to phase two, uh, Western York, on Wednesday. I just looked. I couldn't find it online, but that was a call or an email, a text message I had just less than an hour ago. Wednesday, not Tuesday. So right. maybe somebody could check that afterwards and confirm that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, there's obviously a lot of issues going on in our cities uh, with uh, protests and riots. At six o'clock tonight, Lockport was, PD was targeted, downtown Lockport. Uh, we dispatched the Sheriff's Department there to help out city of Lockport. There's more going on in Niagara Falls coming up by the end of the week. We understand that something scheduled from uh, Hyde Park to the police station in Niagara Falls on Friday. Not sure what time, but a lot of this is being organized from a rebel standpoint from you know, out of the area. They're bringing people in as far out as Long Island, busting them in, uh, trying to cause trouble. So we got some issues coming down um, over these next couple of weeks. And also another thing that you should be aware of is that um, if you recall a year ago, uh, there was a black individual in the jail that uh, had expired. And uh, that is on the 14th of June. We expect something there. We've been in contact with the family who said, please, we don't want anything. They're gonna have a candlelight vigil uh, in honor of their lost loved one, but they're telling the, uh, the protesters and so on, they do not want any issues over this. So uh, this month is gonna be a little hairy over these next several days because of the uh, people that are literally busting in. Uh, other than that, uh, the hairdressers and stuff, when they open up, uh, there's, there's been an issue about getting a full face shield. What we understand is your barbers and beauticians have to have a full face shield. Uh, and got a source of them coming, hopefully in the next hour or so. Somebody's identified where they can get those. So when your businesses call in and say, hey, you know, I got to do this, they, they've got to be checked for the uh, COVID virus. They got to be tested for that. They got to have all this uh, PPE. But um, right now, people are saying, I can't even find a face shield anywhere. So we're trying to find a source for those. I will let you know, uh, or Becky will through some of her communications as soon as we find out. So, so we're staging to get our businesses open again. Uh, I think what Friday, somebody correct me if I'm not uh, correct here, but Friday government is supposed to now reopen officially with a staff. That's not mine. <laughs> uh, with a 50% uh, staffing. Uh, that's my understanding. So let's see, other than that, um, oh, there's a lot of uh, vandalism going on and theft. So lock your vehicles. I don't normally lock mine, but I'm going to now. Um, they're just ravishing vehicles, uh, your marinas also, and some homes. You get it quite bold, especially more in some of the more rural areas and some of the developments that are not well lit. So there's been a big upswing in vandalism and theft over these last couple of weeks. Uh, Dave, I have a question for you. Uh, is that 14-day incubation period still spanned between phases? That's my understanding that it's still, the, that's not, I don't expect that to change either. Okay. I, I didn't think so, but I wanted to ask just in case because things yeah. change from day to day. Also, um, you know, we're still going to have some meetings, but I understand that uh, they are still limited to the number of 10. Is that correct? That is correct. At this point, that is correct. Okay. Um, now, your um, farmer's markets have been allowed in phase one. Somebody questioned me on that, but that's how you've been allowed. Uh, Wilson is opening their farm market again, effective tomorrow night. However, be advised that um, your home um, yard sales are not permitted. So, uh, that's standing. Had, uh, what's that? We've had uh, numerous phone calls related to uh, yard sales, garage sales, and we have told them they are not permitted. Yet. Yep, correct. So that's the most clear I have, and hopefully uh, in the next couple of minutes we'll get a an official opening for phase two Wednesday is what I just heard. So anybody else got anything? If, yeah, Dave. Uh, I'm, always, I'm always available. Five o'clock. Listening to the news tonight, uh, I heard that uh, the FBI and law enforcement used to be able to see text messages and social media uh, communications um, unfiltered, but now these bad guys that are sending text messages and going through social media to try to uh, get a bunch of people together to do bad stuff, they're, they're doing it encrypted. Uh, so the so the law enforcement 
I don't know who's teaching them how to do all this stuff, but it's even above my pay, pay raise, but uh, you're encrypting all of their uh, text messages and everything that they're trying to organize uh, so that law enforcement can't see them. Well, that's not surprising because we're very certain that uh, these groups that are being busted in here are funded. They're very well funded, um, even offshore. And they're taking advantage of the situation. You know, we have not only the pandemic, but we have an economic downturn. Uh, we're at a point of weakness. So they're, they're taking advantage of that and very well funded. So I noticed also on the news tonight, Dave, that um, several of the arrests that were made in Buffalo were people not even from this area. Right. So. Uh, the other, yeah, the other update, and Larry, you reminded me of this: the public Wi-Fi that you had signed up for, uh, the two locations. That equipment was shipped from Cisco to the vendor to RTO. That was configured last week. Uh, ho hopefully, by the end of last week, all of that technology has been shipped to the installers. Uh, the two installers are out of Orleans County. I'm not sure what their names are but I've asked RTO as soon as they get confirmation from the installing companies that they will give me a list, a schedule, because I'm gonna personally go to each site as they're installing it, just to oversee it uh, and uh, thank them for what they're doing, even though it was all funded by RTO. So I, I would expect mentioned by the end of the week, we're gonna start hopefully getting an install schedule for that public Wi-Fi. Dave, you mentioned two, but we were cut back to one, and one's acceptable. But you mentioned two. Did we did it get increased back to two, or are we still at one? Um, I put back in for two. Okay. All right. Two there. Uh, Wilson School's got two, and I put you in for two because I didn't over uh, uh, override my quota. So. So we have one for Town Hall and Mike, you, Mike Rinaldi, you were going to put one on the uh, uh, community center or the teen center? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I'll put it into the community center. Okay, well, we can talk. You have a bad connection there, Mike. You're coming in a little. Okay, I think he said community center, but that, that we'll work out those details later. Uh, all set, Dave? Yep, as soon as I get confirmations, Larry, I'll let you know. And everybody, just feel free to call me at any time. You all have my cell phone. I'm sure you do. If not, ask anybody on this call. They've got it. So okay, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Everybody stay healthy. Good to, good to have you on, Dave. Um, Matt, do you want to go into our motions? Uh, yes, I can. Um, we only have one on the agenda, and then there was that late one that came in from Tim. So uh, we'll start with the one on the agenda. This motion from the town board uh, resolution to approve and authorize Supervisor Don McSwan to sign a recreational lease agreement with the Town of Wheatfield Lions Club for a one year term allowing town use and requiring some town maintenance of the Lions Club property. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Randy, second. Baker, motion. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any opposed? Okay. Motion approved. Okay, Matt. Okay, and then this is the one that Tim mentioned that uh, came in. Motion in accordance with the seeker requirements, the town board has reviewed part one of the EAF, completed part two, and evaluated the impacts in part three and have determined that the Wheatfield Veterans Memorial Project will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and therefore issues a negative declaration. The town board authorizes a supervisor to sign the EAF, including all attachments, which will act as a negative declaration. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposition? Approved. And that is it, no further motions. Okay, Matt, do you have anything for us tonight? You want to discuss at all or not? Um, no, I don't think so. Unless there were any questions, I don't have anything else. Unless there are questions. Okay, we'll move on to board members. Larry, a uh, couple things. Uh, the, the, there was one department. Our building department had a, uh, several of their phones had voicemail issues where they had a limit of twenty and they couldn't accept any additional voice messages. So. 
our carrier Newcastle increased that limit from 20 to 40. I sent an email to all the other departments to see if they were having similar issues. You know, with the coronavirus and the work schedules being cut in half and staffing's not like it used to be, so sometimes it's taken us a day or two to get back to people and our voice messages, I think we're getting log jammed a little bit, but that should have been helped that situation. And then we had a department head meeting today and I think I reminded all the departments, I remind them here again tonight, that if we have individual items where things have been delayed because of the, you know, the virus, uh, if, if there's certain things that you want to put on the web page for your department to say that we're now doing this or our, our work hours are this, uh, I encourage all departments to uh, up, make, make sure our web page is up to date because people are using websites more nowadays than what maybe they used to. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Gil? I don't have anything at this time, Dan. Okay, thank you, Gil. Uh, Kurt Doctor. Yeah, so we had our May meeting of the Wheatfield Enhancement Volunteers, and we talked about budget, uh, knowing that it's going to be a difficult year budget-wise. We, we did see sales tax figures, and there's definitely a reduction, so we want to do our part. Uh, we agreed to reduce our budget by 80% of what we had planned to spend this year, so we're going to give back $16,000 into Ed's Kitty, uh, which we hope will help out. Um, secondly, the, I see Ed smiling over there, so I think so. Um, secondly, the concrete wall at the corner of Nash and Niagara Falls Boulevard. Uh, we are working on some visual designs for the signage that we'd like to put up there. And I'm happy to report that Wendell has agreed to help us put together some visuals for that project at no additional ch charge to the town. Uh, so Tim uh, Zuber uh, helped us out to, to get that secured. So Tim, I, I absolutely want to extend a thank you to you because I know you played a big hand in that. So definitely appreciate that. Um, so we, we actually just had a meeting earlier today and I'm excited where we're headed with the project and Rita has really been leading that. Um, so we're, we'll be excited to share some of those designs when, once we have them. And then finally, uh, we have uh, another meeting already coming up for the Enhancement Volunteers, and that session will be held on June 9th, and we'll be doing it on Zoom again. Great. Uh, Kurt, any update on the LED lighting? I'm trying to pin down a date when the construction will begin, but everything is all ironed out. We're, we're all set to go, uh, just waiting to begin construction at this point. Okay, thank you, Kurt. Also, um, as you know, the check was mailed out. Thanks for your help again on that. Appreciate it, Kurt. Anything else, Kurt? That's it. Okay. Randy Reslon. Yeah, I have one thing for Mike. Uh, I, I, don't, I think you skipped over my clock. But anyhow, I got a call from Mike Mead. Uh, I called that day and Lou answered. And I guess he got the grass cut. And he's trying to get a hold of this a homeowner. Uh, the other question I have is, if the grass is cut and the bushes, we have no regulation. Then I talked to another neighbor when driving by, and he says, well, the back porch is a, it's a health hazard. What legally or what can we do as far as uh, doing something there if it is a health hazard? I know the bushes are going to grow. We can't do anything with that. But if, is, if it is a health hazard with animals and skunks living under the back porch, what can or can't we do? Maybe Matt has to get involved. I can't, I can't hear Mike. I don't know if anybody else can. I think Mike is muted. Yeah, he is. There we go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. I thought you guys didn't want to hear from me tonight, so I thought that's why I was turned off. But, um, I, Randy, I heard parts of what you said. I don't know what address you were talking about. And so if you could hit that again. Uh, I didn't hear it. You turn on Lake Mead up, Jago. It's the first, second one on the right. And I just... Two, four, four, three, maybe. Uh, it, the it's long a vacant has house. Been... I think it backs up to Gary. It's been on our radar back and forth for the last umpteen years. Um, we do visuals, what we can see from uh, neighbors that allow us to look at the building. 
A lot of it is to make sure the building's secure and it's cut. There's not a whole lot we do. We try to work with uh, whatever maintenance outfits in there. But again, if you look across the board, there are, we've been limited. These companies haven't been able to work. So if they can't work, you can't expect them to be on top of this. It, we just got the okay to start doing things again. As you know, phase one was less than two weeks ago. So I think everybody's gotta be kind of uh, hang in there and let us catch up. The answer to a health hazard part of it, again, we can cut the grass, we can maintain or lock the house down. There's not much else to do as far as who determines if it's a health hazard or not. Um, if, if again, the lawn's cut and the, and the house is secure. Okay, I'll, I told him I'd get back to him and, uh, you know, obviously we're doing what, what we can. I know Lou was trying to get a hold of this guy. I guess he's somewhere out of, out of state. Yeah, through, it's, it's one of the maintenance outfits that run these things. They, right. They're usually not here, the banks that own them or whatever the financing companies, and they find local crews to either and to do the maintenance on them. Um, but we're all, everybody's behind. We've got more calls for grass and complaints than we had all of last year. You know, we, we typically ran four or five houses last year that were vacant that weren't maintained. Mm -hmm. This year, I think we've got double that on calls and people saying, you know, grass is two feet tall and I got rodents and et cetera. But we've been sending cutters out. We started last week. So we're answering the calls. That's the best I can do. Just, just so everybody knows also, uh, you know, Mike has just started to come back on now with the whole crew now because of the workload. So as you know, and I'll make that a part of my report, but Mike's bringing everybody back on now because there's so many permits coming in, so many complaint calls. So Mike, I don't know if they're all back in yet, but. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, a, you know, as, as Dave said, you know, the government was, low, was limited, you know, as far as that 25% rule, and we stayed with that. And 50% rule goes into effect on Friday. Well, we're 50% already this week, and it will go to 100% next week if we're not caught up. Right. So we're ready. We don't have a choice. I don't know what the other departments are doing, but yeah, we're swamped. And 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 I can add uh, Don and, and to Randy. Um, um, there are a few uh, uh, sections of town code and the state uh, property maintenance code with regard to grass cutting and. Um, and uh, rodents and things that can get harbored either in junk or in, in, in brush that's too high. But um, part of the problem is um, um, after a building inspection sends a violation letter, um, it, it goes to court and court has been closed since about March, I think 16th, only to essential functions. So they are not um, even hearing building inspection cases or, or code violations. Um, so until they get back in the swing of things, there isn't um, a lot of teeth uh, that we can, we can put behind the law until we can get back in court. And just to add to that, um, and, you know, Gary Strankowski, our justice was in the meeting this morning and they have no idea when courts will open back up again. And of course, when they do open up, they're gonna have a one heck of a workload and Mike, I, I hate to see it because you know some of the complaints that are coming in, it's gonna be a while before you can get them in the court. And it's a problem. And we've got stuff that's gotta come back in from last year. I mean, these are the repeat offenders. Those things are still hanging out there. So all these things that were in place at the beginning of the year, as far as court dates, they all went out the window. Yeah. And so here we are, though, they've progressively gotten worse. And now we're trying to, and again, we limited as far as Matt mentioned when it comes to teeth that we can do. You can write them all you want, yeah. but you can't do a whole lot more than that. Yeah. And you know, all we can do is do the best that we can to do our portion of the job. And hopefully when courts open up, then we can uh, hopefully expedite some of these um, chronic problems. Hopefully. Uh, anything else? Guys? Ed, do you have anything for us tonight? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Okay, Ed. <laughs> yeah. Ed. No, I, I, I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, just uh, in brief, uh, and I have a, a newsletter going out this week. Uh, we had a meeting this morning, a lengthy meeting discussing our reopening plans, which as you know, our emergency declaration will end the 15th of the month, which really uh, 
based on New York State guidelines doesn't mean a lot other than our town hall will open up basically by appointment only. The doors will still be locked. The constables will answer the door and take someone, whoever that person would be, who's made an appointment to the appropriate department. They'll still have to wear masks. Uh, they will not be able to wear a t-shirt up over their nose or an open scarf underneath. They'll have to have a, a mask that covers their nose and their mouth fully. Um, but that's pretty much what we can do. But I do have a, and I, I started working on it this afternoon, a newsletter that's gonna go out to give a little more detail as to far what we have to do as far as reopening, uh, hand sanitizing, uh, masks. Again, we have sanitizing stations, plexiglass. I think if anybody's been in the town hall, uh, you can see what we've been doing. Uh, to protect not only the people coming into the town, but also our employees. Uh, but that, that'll be coming out. Hopefully, I'll have it done tomorrow, and everybody will get a copy of it. And anybody that has any questions about the, um, the reopening uh, stages as they come, uh, you know, contact me. Uh, as you know, stage three will be at least two weeks, and I, I can't imagine that it'll, do, it'll happen in two weeks. And stage four, who knows? Uh, you know, Dave, you're on there. It's... Uh, it's probably going to be some quite some time before it happens. Our recreation department buildings are still closed, uh, not only for recreation facilities, but also for any meetings. So any other meetings, government meetings, EDA, et cetera, will be conducted here at the town hall. And the purpose for that is so that the girls can sanitize after every meeting. Uh, they spray the seats, wipe the chairs uh, and the tables down. So we're going to keep our meetings here. And then remember, we're looking at the, the maximum of 10 people attending these meetings. So uh, that's why we'll have them in our meeting room here at the town hall. So if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead. Most of you were at the meeting today, so. Any questions, guys? And you know, things change on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes minute by minute, and I will keep you posted the best that I possibly can. Um, you know, things happen every day, as you know, that uh, even catch us off guard with these um, uh, contract tracer sheets that we have to fill out. And we'll talk about more of that, and that'll be also in my newsletter to give everybody informed about that. So that's all I have. Anybody have any questions for me? Next meeting will be July 6th, 2020, and it may be a Zoom. We'll see how things progress, uh, but it may be another Zoom meeting. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Uh, motion and second. We are adjourned. Thank you for attending tonight. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless. Amen.